every time I come home. With you, right here in front. You could have a lawn ornament made of me. Say cheese. Cheese. Now come to Papa. Do you realize we have one long, glorious evening together? Ready or not, here, right? Go. Perhaps we should go inside and not spectacle of ourselves. No, no, no. It's too too dark to be a spectacle. Well, anyone can walk in at any moment. <laughs> Exciting as that is. <laughs> we'll say it's not a rattlesnake. Oh, good idea. Unhand my wife. Who invited you? Now, the question is, who invited my parents? Not that they ever wait for an invitation. Your parents are here? Yeah, any minute now. Sorry, Jerry just told me like an hour ago. I no, you two had plans. Have. Present tense. Um, they're gonna expect to see you, Alexis. So, you just tell them that she's out of town. Well, he can't do that. Why the yeah. hell not? Well, because it's just too wobbly. I mean, what if somebody saw me in my car or saw me leave the hotel without my luggage? And, and I don't want his parents to think that I would lie to him. Okay, fine. So just tell him that uh, she's out uh, late for a deposition or something. Oh, see, he can't do that either. Whose side are you on? Well... You see, I wouldn't say that I was working because, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't be. Sure you would. You work late all the time. Well, but if my beloved husband's family were coming in from Alaska, I would shuffle things and, and cancel things and do whatever I, I would to be there. I, I just would. Okay. I understand that you have to be his wife. But do you have to be such a good wife? I mean, most guys in real marriages don't have it as good as he does. <laughs> but you cut the woman some slack. Before I remind you whose his brainstorm this whole mess was in the first place. Look, I'll dispatch my parents to bed as soon as I can. Okay, I'll, I'll start hinting that dad looks tired and pale, and my mother will do the rest. And you guys can have the rest of the evening. Minus a few measly hours. Can you live with that? I'm starting without you. All righty, then. I'll get there as soon as I can. I know, I know. Safety first. Oh, sure. Shoot the messenger. You're looking at a woman who swore she would never get married and give up her independence. And you're looking at a man who... Well, a year ago wanted nothing more than to be married and give up some of his independence. So neither of us are getting what we want, huh? <laughs> no. But you know what? You and this uh, make-believe marriage of ours is actually perfect for me. Okay. Yeah, because if life were a banquet, then you would be the sherbet. Then you're letting me cleanse my palate until the next big, well, wh whatever it's going to be. You know? It's nice to see that you're falling in love again. Says who? There's just certain things a wife knows. Husband, dear. What? Intercom. Oh, not with you, dear. What, what's this? Uh, a dubious looking gentleman dropped it off just now for Edward. He's been in for overzealous lately, I'm afraid. <sighs> yeah, you might call it that. I think it has something to do with Ned and Chloe. It's just a guess. Uh. My yes, too. But I think this videotape should go directly to Ned. My pleasure. In praise to the capriciousness of commercial airlines, Jax's parents' flight was canceled. They're coming in tomorrow morning, so we have the whole night ahead of us, right? in peace, not to spy or report back to anyone about what person or persons may or may not be on the premises. I see, much appreciated. So rare these days. 
Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Quartermain wanted me to give this to Ned. Lila? Yeah, um, we think it probably has something to do with the aforementioned activities that I am not here to partake in. Uh-huh. I'll see that Ned gets it. Okay. Good night. Good night. Well, it's my family, too. Okay. I hate to do this to you, but there's been another change on the parents' arrival. Hey, Ashton, you're no longer alone with your wife. I'm taking it with me. Hi. Ned's not here. Alexis, what's wrong? You should meet the plane and make sure they get settled in the suite. Because I'm with my wife. Thank you. I knew you'd understand. Bye, Jerry. I take it your parents are here. Yeah, nothing stops John and Lady Jane once they've made up their minds. See, the flight was rerouted because of bad weather, so they rented a private jet. Good. All right, then. Well, let's uh, go to the penthouse. I wouldn't want my in-laws beating me to the front door. No, you're a good lawyer, Alexis. I believe the tactic you're using right now is called misdirecting, wherein you get me off my question without ever answering it. You know, we may not have a real marriage, but I know when my wife is upset, so please tell me what's wrong. Funny you should bring up marriage. Now, ours may be entirely bogus, but has it ever crossed your mind that maybe Ned's and Chloe's isn't? Damn, I knew it. Knew what? That Ned's falling in love with Chloe? Ned said that? No, did he say that to you? No, no, of course not. And Ned doesn't love Chloe, he loves you. Then why did you say you knew it? I just assumed that you made a comment about Chloe and didn't bother to notice that it hurt your feelings. I mean, big surprise, huh? Ned doesn't pay a lot of attention. There's a delicate balance that the four of us have to maintain. What did Ned do? Did he praise Chloe for helping Ellen B as if you hadn't stood guard over that company night and day? Ned didn't say anything. That's not why I'm upset. I was just thinking that they make a great couple. Ned and Chloe. Yes, I think they're very compatible. I do. They speak the same language, and they, they certainly make each other laugh, and they certainly spend enough time together that would it be so impossible to believe that the pretense of their falling in love could be a reality at some point. Where would that leave us? With all due affection and respect, dear wife, when it comes to the man you love, you've made a sharp detour into left field. And I know why. See, Ned's happily living with another woman. Complications rolling off his back. What can I say? He has a gift for bigamy. Excuse me? Well, this isn't the first time Ned's done a balancing act between two wives. Well, right now he has one wife. Chloe. And for the record, I'm your wife. Alexis, relax. Ned's love for you is real. And no amount of pretense will crack it, much less break it. Proximity is its own kind of bond, and Ned and Chloe live together and on a daily basis are in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the entire insane Quartermain family. I know proximity brings people closer together, like us in the Sahara, but let me ask you something. Did spending time in a cave with me make you doubt your feelings for Ned? Not even once. Exactly. So why anticipate any less of Ned? I mean, have you suddenly gone blind not to see the way he looks at you? And how he'd like to put his fist through my face every time I touch you? Alexis, you're what he's done right. And he knows that. Thanks, Abby. You should keep going. 
It's okay. Uh, Jerry's babysitting. Well, you know, I need to get my rest because your mother's probably going to take me through the woods, across the lake, up to Nova Scotia, rock climbing before breakfast. Yeah, actually, she did ask if there were any good rappelling sites in the area. Oh, you like rappelling. I don't even like helicopters. Well, after tomorrow, you will love helicopters. <laughs> I'm kidding. Huh. Come on. Uh, give me just a second, will you? 